Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is a joint work with Jacques, who was uh, assuring Okamos type checker soundness. And yeah, let's see. I think there are already many such projects uh, about uh, validating Okamos or to, to assuring the Okamos type checker soundness. And theoretically, the Many parts of Gamma's type checker has already been proven, but only part by part. I, I, I don't know very much about the Gamma's long history, but I think uh, when new feature is introduced, then its feature must first be proved on the paper and then later coded into the type checker. But combining them is a different thing. It is very difficult, and I think it is it introduces new problems, new inconsistencies sometimes. Then. Uh, the proving total system is very difficult, so we tried to experiment, rather translating OCaml's typed program into Coca, like this. OCaml C compiler does generate the typed tree when the type check fa uh, finishes, and then we generate a uh, similarly behaving Coca program out of it. So. Uh, the soundness we want to assure is this. The type two programs must not be evaluated into some very wrongly typed values. We don't care about non-termination. It is just a polymorphic effect, and it is well typed. So diagrammatically, we do this kind of thing. Uh, values, are input, input values and programs are translated, and output values should evaluate into uh, same thing. And if we if we can if we rely, if we uh, believe that Cox, <laughs> Cox has that sort of type soundness, then um, this translation and its successful execution of a translated program in Cox shows the soundness of the original program. So let's see the translation. Uh, before translation. We want to execute the translated program in Coq, so we have to avoid several things. First, we cannot use axioms in Coq because the axioms appear as an abstract value in Coq's program, so it blocks execution. We cannot use axioms. And there are many features in the camera program, so we have to, as faithfully as possible, translate it as faithfully as possible. So there are many things to do. Especially polymorphic comparison is a very basic but peculiar function. We have to do it. Uh, uh, it is not easy. We need to know the intentional expression or the, the syntactic expression of types to do it. That is what we see in the next slide. So well, well, we, what we have in our uh, translation will be the syntactic expression of camel types, and it's a translation function or realizer or decoder into the, uh, some real type in the cock. And then, of course, we need to handle effects. We rely on monads in cock of this type. This is just a, a store and exception. Then, but the problem occurs that environment and exception both relies on cock type T and cock type T, cock type this, cock type the function also relies on M, so they are uh, twisted. We need to very uh, invent some <laughs> methods to uh, define this mutually recursive things. And we cannot use, as I said, we cannot use the axioms. So, in the diagrammatically or uh, graphically, these things are typed like this. And a type is just uh, some type, and cock type is a realizer. It looks like a task universe, but we have to twist the uh, monad to handle effects. So, monads look, monad look like this. You see, the cock type M depends on M, and environment depends on N, and exceptions depends on N, and binding depends on M. So, this is kind of a fixed point. 
no, we have to tie this knot by some recursion, or maybe I should say untie this knot. So the actual definition looks like this. The ML type is just a syntactic ex expression, and it's, a, it's rather easy. We can involve uh, user-defined types like this, uh, collected from just one ML file. We cannot handle more than one ML file for now. And the translator function looks like the M is a variable. And uh, M appears at least at the translation of the arrow. So we cannot avoid using it. And of course, user-defined types might have M. Then, uh, this is a bit of dense slide, so I have to explain it carefully. Uh, this is a definition of, about the definition of monads, and we have to bypass something in Cork that is needed to that is uh, existing as safeguard, that is strict positivity condition on inductive types. <coughs> we could also do relaxing the definition of Cork type function by uh, relaxing the uh, guardedness, but we chose to rather relax the definition of the inductive type because it, it seemed uh, a bit safer. I don't know. This is a theoretical question I want to <laughs> investigate later. So the key environment is just a, 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 as I said, the sequence of binding. And this integer is a number of already allocated memories. We if we you make a new reference, then we add to this sequence the pair of integer and its uh, type. So the, finally, the monad can be defined using these definitions and thanks to this bypassing. So and then translating programs, and I have, uh, we can do this kind of thing. McCarthy function, define an ML file like this is translated into this Cox fix point like this with an extra parameter, extra parameter for gas for loading recursion. If you pass, for example, uh, 10,000, this function computes exactly the same as in Okamo. Or there is an exception if the gas is too little. Then uh, comparison function, this is a primitive Okamo function and that, that is not a user defined function. You know, um, we needed environment to contain uh, ML type, the syntactic, syntactic part of the type, to do the comparison on the, the reference values. Since this compare is polymorphic. And the result of breaking strong normalization appears. Uh, uh, re let's recall the definition. In environment was like this. And actually, we can do <laughs> recursion <laughs> without using gas, <laughs> like this omega, <laughs> defined using reference, and calling just itself, is <laughs> successfully translated into this program. It actually runs infinitely without consuming any memory. It seems to be consuming no <laughs> memory, so it is uh, very faithfully translated into the omega function in Coq. So, uh, since this, we can write this function in OCaml, and we cannot avoid, it means that we cannot avoid relaxing some part of a cock if we want to translate this program. And note that we, we, we don't want but a proof of force coming out of it, and I don't know if this can be uh, shown, but my intuition, our intuition is does the value, a computation occurs inside the monad, and we cannot express it things out of monad. <laughs> okay, that's too bad news. Okay. And uh, we can also do the simulating top level uh, of the camera features. So we can do, uh, the camera has a top level feature. The values are defined on the source code line by line, and we can simulate it by uh, decomposing the the, the state model into read and write down just using write apart. So we can also do this kind of thing and translate this thing into the Coq program. So how many times do I have that? Not much. Not much, okay. <laughs>
So uh, there are many questions and theoretical things, and we want to investigate um, the, the, the soundness things. Yes, I want to discuss that later. And I'd like to show a bit of demo. So this is a kind of an example of a generated program. You can see here are basic camera pro uh, types. And there are also some user-defined types. Mm -hmm. The original program looks like this. There are types like this. And then maybe you are interested in Omega. Yeah, this is how one does. Okay, I'll stop here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>that is not related to the proof of false which is surely derivable in your in your from your inductive type uh, there is um, I'm surprised that you can okay, okay so I'll say that otherwise um, you you don't have second order quantification uh, you don't you don't support the whole camel type system do you because if you have second order quantification then you cannot do the trick uh, you are doing to the structural equality because you you will not be able to have the the types you need the runtime to check the you need to store the, the, the data in the runtime, in the real runtime, more than the. Uh, you, 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 uh, well, okay, my question is: Do you have second? What, what do you exactly mean by the second order? The uh, fact, you know, the, the, the in your camel there is this thing where, and then the recalls you can have a like full second order quantification rather than just ML style uh, Hindler, Hindler, Hindler polymorphism. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you write the uh, quote a dot blah 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 inside a, inside a, a record, and that gives you the full power of system F. And this prevents you from uh, having monomorphization essentially, mm -hmm. and in that case, you you need m you need more. I don't I, I don't I don't maybe I don't know whether you do that, but uh, I I don't see how you can you can um, make uh, structural equality work in that setting. Uh, can you comment on that? Mm, I think the most honest answer is that we have never reached that <laughs> point of the translation. But hmm, do you have an example of such an account program? Yeah, that's a trick. We th we use it for like a lot of uh, impredicative encodings of monads and everywhere. Uh, like, a okay, I'd like to see it later. <laughs> well, even in the clock in the clock code, we have examples. Okay. So, if I'm not mistaken, in the terms you use a form of step indexing because you have fuel, right, to handle recursion. Could you use fuel as well in the l at the level of types to do a bit like they do in Iris and have some kind of recursive definitions that is not strictly positive but it's still sound in some sense? Uh, 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 could you repeat the question? Is, is it about using uh, Iris? No, it's about using the same techniques as they do in Iris to have uh, some kind of well, self-referential definition that is not strictly positive but without disabling the positivity check of Koch using in, in the same way that you use at the level of terms, you don't have, you don't verify the syntactic guardedness of Coq to do recursive term definitions, but you use this number to basically make it structurally decreasing. But you could try to do that at the level of types as well. The question. Okay. The answer is I'm really interested in that method. <laughs> That's, I don't know. <laughs> uh, any other questions? If I understand correctly, currently you generate this ML type in Coq based on the input program. You mean right. the because it contains user-defined type, so you you automatically generated exactly this. Yes. yes. Did you think about having a representation of all possible OCaml types, so a representation of all possible recursively defined OCaml types once and for all? Yes. Uh, uh, our goal is to translate all of possible common type definitions in the source code. But do you, can, do you think you can have one inductive type that never has to be changed because it can capture all possible OCaml types? Uh, you're about the, the translating types from 
many source files. Yes. Okay. Okay. That that is not that is not um, uh, that is a future to come. <laughs> okay. We have not linking phase yet. Currently, only one source file can be compiled. Okay. I think uh, we can thank our speaker again.